In today's episode, we're talking with Bo Brown, who was not a former member of the Living Word Fellowship, but had some interesting perspective as a student at the church-affiliated school. So he was a non-member that had a uh, up close and personal experience with Church of the Living Word, and we're, we get to hear all about his observations, which is really interesting, you know, to hear from an outside perspective how all of these things were perceived. The Church of the Living Word had a series of schools throughout the years, starting in the seventies. There were schools in Iowa and San Diego and Colorado and California. Um, and probably more, but the one that is in LA was the one that lasted the longest and ended up bringing in, ultimately, originally those, those schools were meant just for members of the church or for their kids. And eventually the school in LA opened up to other kids that wanted to go. It was more, more, for the more facing the public for the public. And these kids, I'm also a graduate of this school. Um, Loud and school. proud. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, and uh, these, some of the kids that were brought in always kind of had a interesting perspective. So um, yeah, so we're hoping to see what Bo has to say. Um, Did you guys have a mascot? Today. Were you guys like the holy rollers? Did <laughs> There were not holy rollers. <laughs> there definitely were technically mascots or something, but there was no school pride. There was no like you didn't even have a sports, sports teams. team. Yeah. yeah, there weren't. There wasn't anything going on there. I think I want to say like a lion or an eagle were involved was somewhere. It the lion something of like Judah? that. That track. It was John because John was the lion. Oh John was the lion of Judah. Of course, that, or that was one of his many nicknames. Um, yeah, anyways, I'm uh, I'm uh, Scott Barker. And I'm Charity Novalesi. And this is Oops. I'm in a cult. cult. God damn it. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to the whatever fucking podcast this is. You don't but... want to mention that it's the Living Word Cult? No, I think that's great. But is it just going to be called the Living Word Cult podcast? No, no. Oh, what could it be? What could it be, Charity? You and I are both former members, Living Word, Fellowship. We're investigating the uh, the ins and outs of our experience. In and out podcast. <laughs> you can cut that part up. It's real casual. It guarantee is going to break down very quickly, which is <laughs> totally fine. It's, it's the Living Word Fellowship. It's the walk. Thought it was a church, turned out it was a cult. Oh, there's a good. That's it. That's what it is. That's it. I mean, I kind of love it. It's not bad. It's not bad. Oops, I'm in a cult. <laughs> Here we are. We are here with Bo Brown. Um, Bo, we, as we explained in our intro, is not a part of the Living Word Fellowship officially, but you um, were with, uh, you went to the school. And when did you, when did you start going to the church school? Um, I started going there in seventh grade. So okay. what year was that? That's middle school. Year. Yeah, I don't know what that would be for you. <laughs> yeah. You were you were we were at the school around the same time, but you were younger. You were in the I don't know exactly. Yeah, you, you were, were a grade above my sister, actually, I think. Yeah. No Yeah, or I was. Yeah, that's maybe. right. Yeah, like maybe yeah. a greater a grade or two above her. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Um yeah, so how how did you end up there after elementary school? How come you didn't go to a public school? Uh I don't even know. Uh, so my mom wanted me to go to like a small Christian school. She didn't know what we were about to get into, but <laughs> um, we were like, all right, cool. So she found this school and uh, basically she's like, you have to go there and you have to take a test to get in. And I was like, oh, OK. And I like went there and I took some like tests that had some pretty weird questions on it. But it also had like random math and English. And it was me and like one other kid. And I'm like. This place is pretty small. Why am I testing to get into here? Yeah. And it was like, I didn't. I didn't have to test to get in. What was yeah. What was some of the weird questions on there? I mean, were they mostly academic, or was there anything like personal? There was. Yeah, there was some academic, and then I remember there was some about religion. Like, what religion are you? Um, do you believe in like one God? It, it was like sort of just. It was so long ago because I graduated mm -hmm. 2010, so that must have been. I mean. 2005 maybe or something yeah um but yeah i just remember being weird questions and then i went back home that day and also i remember you guys talked about this in 
one of the other episodes. Uh, I'm a fan of your stuff, by the way. That's why I reached okay. out to you, Scott, because I'm like, I've been following you on your journey. And then I was like, somebody's finally talking about this. I have so much to say. Because I would give my, a few of my best friends were in the church. It's still my best friends. They're out of the church now. But I just always was. Anyways, let me get back into that. Uh, yeah, we'll but definitely. I was taking the, yeah, yeah, I was taking the test and the person who was there, not saying any names, uh, came up behind me it was a teacher at the time and was just like rubbing my shoulders and I did not know who this person was and I was just like this is odd and I was sort of just like like this a little bit and then like the person walked away and sat back down and it was me and another another one of my friends who's one of my best friends to this day as well that was another thing that came out of this school was weird stuff happened but like four of my closest friends that apparently it's pretty rare to have a relationship like we have uh -huh. are from that school. But person who was in there with me experienced the same thing. And uh, it was just a very weird experience. <laughs> yeah. So let's slow, let's, we'll slow down really quick before you haven't even gotten to the what's on the test here. Um, and it's weird that you had to take a test. I don't think any, and maybe it's a generation thing. Maybe they implemented it later or something. I've never even heard about an entrance exam for centers of learning this like <laughs> well, it's odd too because like the school itself was so i want to say unprofessional like i taught spanish there for well, yeah they're giving you back rubs at the test <laughs> 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 Sherry, the did you teach already. spanish there before one of the other teachers who was a male i feel like we've met at some point it's possible did, did um yeah okay sorry and, uh, i don't know if I should say that but <laughs> Is that the only think, is that the only time that you taught there, Charity? Was I think I only taught year? there for a year, but I remember thinking it was odd. Like I noticed that they would always hire people at the school to teach that weren't really qualified. They're just like, oh, you know this. Like, so why don't you come in and teach these yeah. kids? And it's like I had a degree in Spanish, but I'd never taught before, had no teaching credentials. And they, they did that a lot with like members of the church. They would bring them into the school to teach. And I just mm -hmm. always thought that was like <laughs> pretty Pretty lame. So the fact that they made you take an entrance exam for what yeah. is essentially so, kind of a shit school. Exactly. We always, from like an outsider perspective, after you said that right there, we would literally, like the kids who weren't in the church, I feel like I was almost the leader of this. Now, it's probably why I got sent to the principal's office so much, which had a paddle in it, which was really weird, by the way. Uh -huh. um, oh, yeah. I'm glad you can and verify yes. that for me because I didn't remember yes. if there was, yeah, there was. No, I remember day. the first time of many for really dumb things i would go in there and i'd be like why is that just sitting there but uh we would literally be it. like yeah they, in the I, in I the shiloh no church school they used to use it when i was a kid like it was yeah. an eight-hole paddle yeah yeah it, but we would literally be like uh, who won the raffle this year who's going to be a teacher who's going to be this teacher but we'd be like who, who won the teacher raffle because i'm like none of these people know what they're doing <laughs> that's amazing you were just be the most it. randoms yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. They're, the whole story of how I got onto it is actually pretty funny. <laughs> That's let's okay. Let's let wait. Wait. We're gonna get into it. But I want to hear a little bit about the this test. Like, do you remember it, it, you were saying? So you're getting your back massage, which is a whole weird thing, by the way. I wanted to like, like a shoulder that was massage. The, it was the, weird. The shoulder <laughs> massage is a whole thing that like we've explored briefly in other places. We've explored it, but it's it comes from a word from John about controlling children as you give them like little sol shoulder massages. And it was something that I experienced a lot from Rick, who is our, you know, dear friend, um, and <laughs> center of so many of, uh, the Brother problems in Christ. the wedding with him. Yeah. <laughs> Don't you worry. I have weird stuff with him okay, too. Good, 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 good. <laughs> so you're getting your, you're getting your, your shoulder massage, um, while you're taking your test. What's, what's on the test. That's like, you know, aside from like the math questions you're talking about. So it was like, I remember the person told me it was, it was just like a general personality test slash academic test that you do to get into every school. And I was just like, I don't think that's really that true, mm -hmm. but whatever, I'll just fill it out. I remember it had math and like English questions. Um, I remember one of the pages literally had like, um, it was almost like they scanned it from a website. Like it still had the search bar thing up there. <laughs> And I was just like, what is happening right now? But it was like, I remember there was a ton of religious que questions. And then the other stuff was really just general, like, it was just random, like, academic questions gotcha. that they seem to have pulled from Google. <laughs> yeah. 
Okay, so that 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 like the religious questions kind of like makes a little bit of sense, but uh, I would say it was like fifty fifty for sure. Yeah. What was your perspective in general from this place? Like you're talking about the teachers, the kids. Um, could you tell the way that people were treated differently? Like the kids that, you know, once you started to figure it out, like who was a part of the church and like who wasn't a part of the church? Did you find it weird that like most people, I don't know if they were most people at your time, but like, yeah. I, I would your... say it was, yeah, I totally get what you're saying. Uh, mm -hmm. It was, it was weird right off the back. Uh, because I remember the weird sort of like favoritism towards people and figuring out certain people went to the church and I was like, ah, whatever. It's just like a church school. And then it was just like the weird stuff would start happening where they were like, all right, so every day before school ends, everyone has a cleaning job. And I was like, oh, yeah, I forgot about that. Yeah. yeah. The cleaning jobs. That was the first thing where I was like, that's pretty weird. And I remember that was the first time I went to the principal's office. I literally was like, so we're paying how much money to go here and you guys can't get janitors. Like, <laughs> like we're the janitor. And I said yeah. it as a joke, like I wasn't being rude about it, but apparently I was. And it, it was this, it was pitched as this thing of like, um, uh, responsibility, like you were to learn like responsibility, but like, which is, you know, fine. It's a way of teaching that kind of stuff. We all had like 15 minutes at the end of the day that we like half-assed our, our cleaning job or like going <laughs> yeah. to the bathroom and having to like clean the toilets and stuff. But except I was followed around you were make, you were? to make sure you were, yes. you were working to, to make sure I was doing it. Yes. I yeah. was followed around every single time. It was like each teacher, there was three teachers that had to follow me around to make sure I was doing it. And I was just like, I'm doing it. It's like, I've been here for four years and I'm still doing it. Like, <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. The, the, I, it's funny looking at it now because like, that's, that's the way that the church treated the kids in the church. Like we just had, had conversations about YASP and like how any of the work that needed to be done, it was, you just pass it off instead of hiring somebody. And so this is just like a, you know, a miniature version of that for like the, um, for the school. Yeah. Free labor. It's interesting. Free labor. Exactly. Yeah. 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 I remember my mom wasn't too keen on that. She was just like, that's pretty weird. And that's when she started doing a little research and she sort of, she found those forums oh. and like pretty, pretty like, I would say maybe a year and a half in or two years in, she found like forums about the, like the whole thing that went into like the whole like silver mines and all these different weird things. Yeah. Um, the big Shiloh in um, Iowa. And she was just like, at one point I remember my mom was like, does weird stuff happen there? I'm like, yeah, there's people that like certain kids a little bit more. There's random people that always show up and come into class and like walk around the campus. Uh, Rick being one of them, like all the time. I'm like, they have a weird community that everyone lives in this neighborhood like everybody comes to the same school. There's one main place, Rain Street. I'm like, I have to go over there sometimes to like, I had to like make tables one time. Actually, a lot of times, anytime there's physical labor, I was pulled out of class, whatever class it was. And they're like, Bo, come over here, help. Um, I don't want to say their names, but like the two guys that were always there and what did the they do? Guy. Were they like construction guys or something? Or the, the construction yeah. crew that was working for the, the church? Yeah, and him school. and then the other younger guy that I guess a whole bunch of drama happened with or whatever. And <laughs> forgot what his name was. Um, but yeah, I would just get like pulled out of class to do certain stuff like that. Um, I would have to go do stuff at the at the church randomly, like pulled out of class. And I'm like, mm -hmm. this is why am I getting pulled out of class with like... They'd be like, Bo, pick this person, come with you. Or, hey, Bo and you come with. And then I'd like go over and I'd help. I forgot what the guy's name was that was like Rick's friend. Okay. It was always them too. Yeah. Yeah, I forgot what his name was. Um, but it would always just probably, like I'd go over there. Probably Scotty. Um, yes. Yeah. I think that was it. Yeah, yeah. I would just go over there and I would just like literally be – doing weird stuff at the church during like English class. And I'm like, shouldn't I be doing something right now? So that immediately stood out to me as like, this is not normal. Right. This random stuff. And yeah, once I started getting invited to the ASP and saw that, then I was like, all right, I know what's going that's, on here. <laughs> that's my, that's my guess is like what they were 
trying to they're trying to get you just more involved in general and give you the access to like not be in school and um because that all that stuff you explained that was like my experience too at the school but i was also my dad was a teacher and then i was i worked in the audio booth and was involved in the church and all of that stuff and so yeah there were just a lot of opportunities to like not be in school and instead get to go you know, I don't know, whatever work, do some event or move some stuff and just an opportunity to, to ditch. Yeah. Um, in my, in and my the view, Saturday but... schools were. What's that? Those, what were the did... Saturday schools? So they came up with a demerit system where like, if you forgot a book in your locker, which I did all the time, uh, they would give you a demerit. And if you got like five demerits, I think you would have Saturday school. And uh-huh. I literally, I mean, it was me and like four of my friends because like, we would just forget our books sometimes and it would add up after a while. And then we would literally, there'd be one teacher and I had to have like a few times, then my mom had issues and like actually talked to the school and was like, this isn't happening anymore. But like they had me for, it was from nine to 12 or eight to 12. And I had to literally be this close to a wall and in the, in the bungalows. And I literally had to like stare there and that was the punishment. And then like, if we like turned around, then we had to start writing sentences. And I was just like, what is happening? I literally just forgot my book. Oh, so it wasn't like, even what? like you, like a forced study hall or something. You, they just made you stand and stare at a wall? For hours? Or sit in a desk in the back bungalow. That person's, the back left bungalow, uh-huh, that uh-huh. person's uh, yeah. place. Yeah. If it was that person, we had to sit there and like they played religious music and it was just like you stared at a wall oh for four God. hours and it That's was just so like creepy it, it would i mean it's literally out of a movie like people probably think i'm making this up you guys yeah. probably don't but no. like it and then there would be other times which like saturday school is actually pretty fun and uh-huh. it yeah where it was just like you can cut this out if you want where your dad was the person there and it was actually pretty fun like he was yeah. just like I don't know why you're here. Like, <laughs> and like, we just like, I remember one time we did a radio show for him. He just sat there. He's like, do a radio show for me. And I was like, all right. But and what? so it was like, <laughs> like not even recorded radio show. Just like, no, it was like over him. the intercom. Oh. It was on the intercom. It was me and like three of my buddies. I remember that was actually a weird time, but every That's other funny. time, which was probably more than 10 times staring at a wall for four hours. That's so like, dumb. That's like, <laughs> Yeah, it's just a, like yeah, such a was, dumb, like, a, like weird way of like punishing kids for not remember their books. Not even like some like like you have to do more schoolwork and learn something. It was just punishment. It's just dumb. Yeah, dumb it was punishment. that demerit system was my can, worst enemy. <laughs> can we go a little bit back to like when your mom started rummaging through the forms and stuff? What did she she found all of that? What was the what was the conversation that you had? When did was there ever like a thing of like, oh, maybe you shouldn't be going to the school? What was what was going on there? Yeah. So we my mom found it. And at first it was almost like it was almost like funny. Like, is this actually a thing? Because like she we really like went into it and she talked to me. She's like, hey, like we don't you don't need to go here anymore. Blah, blah. blah. But I was just like, I have really close friends here now. Like, mm-hmm. I don't care. I'm never going to go to the church. I didn't know I was going to date a girl from the church and that's wild. But, uh, I was like, I'm never going to go to the church. Like I know what I believe in like, mom, I'm cool. Mm -hmm. And she's like, all right. And then it sort of just became like, if something weird would happen, I'd go home and to my mom, she'd be like, can I get you out of there? And I'm like, no, I'm good. Like I have my friends. We're good. (laughs) And it was just, (laughs) but she found, I remember forms and I remember one night just like she was going over like previous people who had left and like, I mean, there was a lot of people and she was just telling me what everything was about. She told me about John Robert Stevens, how it was almost like we read about it. And then I started connecting the dots Uh. where I was like, oh, everyone goes in the summer to this one camp. Oh, this happens every like Friday, like at Yaps. Oh, this happens when they call mom and dad and bounce blessings (laughs) off of the moon to mom and dad <laughs> mom and dad meaning gary and Marilyn. Yeah. that's yeah yeah that yeah. was a whole bizarre thing i'm sure like as a, as an outsider the, they, dad. everyone called the main leaders mom and dad yeah yeah like and i remember there was even times where like when we had like the church stuff which which was normal for me because like in elementary i went to a christian like elementary school too so but like every time we prayed 
like Gary Marilyn were probably in there in that prayer at some point. Oh, and yeah. I was, and I'm like, who the heck are these people? <laughs> and like, uh-huh. Then I started connecting the dots. <laughs> oh, that's so interesting. So that, so it kind of like reading the forms helped give you a little bit of background. Like we just, and I do, I do see that. Like I understand that from my memory too, is there weren't as many kids, not a part of the church when I was there. And so we would do all this stuff that was like associated with the church where we'd talk openly about it. Chapel, like the chapel that the school had would regularly push the beliefs of the church out through the chapel. Like that when my dad was, you know, ran a lot of the chapels, but like, or the pastors from the church would come over and teach the chapels and stuff. And so I can imagine like kids that just, you know, had more of a normal background being like, what are these people talking about who is Gary and Marilyn what is a Papa John like you know I said the pizza yeah. that we're like you know I can see it going. Yeah. and so reading the forms might have like these things that were banned like that we weren't allowed to read probably helped you understand like oh this is what this place is about like these guys are nuts cool okay did so, the word yeah. cult enter your mind <laughs> The, the word cult entered my mind for sure. And I remember there was like a few times this guy, Mahesh, came, mm-hmm. uh, I think it was his name. And oh, like, yeah. like Mahesh, that was like everyone at school, like even the teachers, everyone was on edge. Like I remember that day and it felt like, you know, that what's like a way I can put this? It's like when you were in elementary school and it's like the day before you're on Christmas break and like everyone's celebrating. That's what it would be like. <laughs> like when he would come and I was just like, we're watching movies, like having pizza or whatever. I'm just like, the what's going on? They're like, town. oh, Mahesh is coming. And I was like, <laughs> so we're not going to do any schoolwork when Mahesh Yeah, comes. yeah it, was, it was pretty much like that. And I was like. Because he was a healer. Was, he yeah. was a healer. He was a healer. So healer was like, who sweet. Put the healer's coming to town. Yeah. 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 So Mahesh, just the, the background is that was in 2000, like early, like 2008 through like 10 or something and, and beyond. Mahesh became like a big like friend of the church or something. And he was a magic man that they, could heal people. What? They ahead. wanted, they wanted, Gary Marilyn wanted everyone to think that he was a friend. But what I right. found out from someone who worked in accounting is he was a paid like speaker. speaker. He got paid thousands of dollars by the church to come. He wasn't I actually. That. <laughs> He'd also he painted himself in gold glitter. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> he, had a, he, had a gold, he had a gold magic dust yeah. situation that, you know, um, like when he would talk, gold would fall from the ceiling. He'd have like gold on his. So he came to the school and like did a tour of the school. Is that, did he like yeah. touch anybody or like get gold on stuff? <laughs> I, I remember he like, he came and he like walked into classrooms and stuff and but everyone else was talking about going to that church service and like you got to go and I was like no I'm not (laughs) I'm not gonna go to that Mm -hmm. and part of me almost wanted to because I was so curious to Mm -hmm. like what happened but I remember there was like this kid who was injured like pretty bad injury and (laughs) and uh he like came back the next day and he's like dude I'm healed and I was like that's a very bad injury. I wouldn't do PE today. And he's like, no, I'm healed. And he did PE. And I mean, he jacked himself up. Bad. <laughs> and like, I was just like, I remember I was with my buddy and I, uh, two of my friends. And I was like, there was no way, like, it was, it was like his ACL. And I'm like, there's oh no way God. in a night. And then it was, I mean, he made it way worse, yeah. like way worse, but it was, since my hash healed him and all this stuff. And I was just like, what's going on here, man? Like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so it must be really interesting. Like you're, it's, that's the thing that I'm, I I've gotten from some of the other stories that you've said too, is just like, it almost sounds like you're a halfway sane person amongst like all the cuckoos just because like everybody is a part of this thing. Um, mm-hmm. you, you mentioned to, I think, did you start like asking some of the teachers questions about the church? Um, did you uh, like that you read on online? Did you ever ask anybody about that stuff? I, I remember asking, um, yeah, I'm not going to say names. The person shortly got, I'm pretty sure kicked out of it. It was the health teacher. Okay. Yeah. 
uh, front right bungalow. Mm-hmm. Love how yeah. we all have this code. It's yeah. like yeah, <laughs> this code, middle yeah. left bungalow. No, That's right. front right bungalow. Um, I remember there was a huge thing where she got like kicked out. Um, whatever happened with that. But I remember talking to her and I was like, I just feel like something's weird is going on. It was when I was doing the, uh, when I was dating the person Uh and I was just like, I just don't feel comfortable. And she's like, well, if you don't feel comfortable, that's fine. Like she was what I would say the coolest teacher there because she was the most realistic with me. Yeah. And I spent a lot of time with her because... (laughs) I somehow got out of taking Algebra 2 class and then got into, I got to take like some online classes with another friend. And so we were in with her while everyone was taking Algebra 2. And she was the most normal person there to me. And it's probably why she got kicked I, out because she was too normal. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, I was like actually upset about it because it was like every time I come back from summer, I'd be like, what's up? <laughs> and and <laughs> she was just gone. And everyone was like, oh, don't mention her. And I was yeah. like, what? Why? <laughs> she got excommunicated. Yeah, that's the yeah. lost her job and obviously the community and the church. Yeah. It's so I, it's yeah. a, that's such an interesting one is like, you know, telling the, the students that like, oh, yeah, just mm, we don't talk about it. She's gone. Sorry. Yeah, yeah, it really was like that. I have, I think I would love to ask you about your experience trying to date somebody in the church. Like, what was that? What was that like? Because you were still in school, in high school, right? And you just wanted yeah. to, like, date. Yeah, so okay. there was a, a girl I liked. She liked me. And it was, I was just like, cool, let's start dating. I think I was, like, in ninth grade or something. And yeah, like I liked her a lot and I was like, let's start dating. And then she's like, okay, sort of not that easy. And I was like, what do you mean? <laughs> like, I was like, I'll talk to your parents. And she's like, now my parents. And she's like, I'll just like tell you about it later. And so like, we talk like every night. And then I remember being at school one day and I got called to the principal's office and you know, who was the principal there. Mm-hmm. Um, who was also one of the shepherds of the right. of, of the church, yeah. And I think that her husband was like above the person I dated, shepherd. Mm-hmm. Um, and so I was there, and she like told me what was going to happen like after school, and I was like, "How do you even know I'm trying to date this person? Like, what is going on here?" Mm-hmm. And so. I was like, all right, whatever. And I went after school and I was in the, I was in the church, like lobby, that little office area. I went in there and it was the girl I was dating, her shepherd, who I'm sure you guys would know her name. I probably can't say it unless you cut it out, but. uh, It's okay. It's just her shepherd. It's fine. Yeah, Yeah. it's it's her shepherd. And then it was also the principal's husband. Uh And I would just like. Went in there and I was like, what's happening? And I'd been watching like intervention with my mom. And I was like, is this an intervention? Like what's <laughs> happening? Like, what did I do? I know I go to the principal's office a lot, but like I like went in there and I sat down, they shut the door and they basically just like interrogated me of yeah. like my intentions. Um, do I plan on going to the church? And I was just like, no, like yeah. I have a church I go to and that's interesting it, it, that that was, I mean, it, it's not surprising to me that they, that was their main, one of their main questions is, are you planning to attend the church? Because they were really discouraging of having outside relationships. Yeah, that's Hard, harder to that's control. That's the vibe people. I got. Yeah. And I mean, as I was in, I was already very uncomfortable. I was just like, this is not worth this like relationship. And I remember they were telling me about like her shepherd said a dream she had. And I was like okay, what does that have to do with anything that like talked about that this person should find this person at this time and maybe I'm that person. Wait, the, shepherd, was like, the shepherd was saying that the, the shepherd had a dream. Yes. And they were like, oh, okay. So that's just, about you know, the girl that you wanted to date? Yeah, about who she was supposed to be dating. Or like, it was like, like I said, it was so long ago. It was like about the situation or, yeah, but I think it was about her and who she should date. And then they were like, what are you planning on doing on these dates? And I was like, I don't know, go to the movies or something. Uh And she's like, okay, you can go to the movies, but like her parents are going to need to be there. And I was like, (laughs) 
I was like, shouldn't her parents be telling me this? Like, <laughs> what is going on? Yeah. And I was, but I was just like, okay, okay, okay. And then they were just like, all right, um, you can go. And then I just sort of like walked outside and I was just like standing there. And my mom was like over at the school. She's like, where are you? And I was like, I don't know what just happened, but I'm coming over. And I just like walked over and so I went they, home. Told your mom didn't know that you were going to have this meeting with the shepherds? About- no, it, it happened during the day. I found out that I had to go have a meeting. Like it was, it was weird. I like found <laughs> out I had to go have a meeting. I like skipped cleaning that day maybe. Uh-huh. And just like walked over to the church. It was very How bizarre. Weird. I mean, think about that in like in a normal setting, mm-hmm. in a normal school. <laughs> if you were called over, it's just it's super inappropriate for one thing to like take you out of school, bring you over the other side of the street to the, the chapel area and the offices right. there. Pull you into this meeting with this, it was the principal and her husband who were main leaders of Church of the Living Word Fellowship in North Hills. And they're just like basically taking the role of this girl's parents. Mm-hmm. It's just like. But even it, if it was like the parents did that, that would be weird. You know, like even if her parents were like, you're going to come and have a meeting with us and we're going to interrogate. Yeah, you. Yeah. Like, like even at that age. Yeah. It's just like, very it's it's super intense. And that's like. That's such a weird it's what's really weird to me is that they risked doing that with like a student at the school who was not a part of the church. It's just like a um, I just it's so obvious. Like, uh, did you mention it to your mom? Did you explain like what happened? Yeah, I told her that. And I remember I honestly don't remember that much. I I, she was just like, okay, that's a little weird. Mm -hmm. Um, but she's like, maybe they're like family members. And I was like, oh yeah, they probably are family members or something. And, and so we sort of just like shrugged it off. And like, the girl was like, she was so sweet. And like, I I almost felt like I was like, this, this stinks. Like maybe like we can make something happy out of this. Uh And I remember it just got to the point where like we had been dating for, I don't know, maybe three months, four months or something, maybe even longer. So you guys did, you got to date. Yeah. So we got to date. I remember she messaged me and said, like, she literally thinks said it got approved or (laughs) like we're good to go. Mm -hmm. And I was just like, okay, "Okay." but how do you feel about it? Like, do you want to date? (laughs) Yeah. And it was it was to the point after that where like we we dated and I, I just felt so weird and so pressured to go to the church. I was just like, all right, I'm cutting this off. Like, I really like her. And she's really nice but i'm just like this whole thing that's attached to her is this Mm -hmm. giant weight and i'm like i can't do this like i know what goes on there and i actually used the dream excuse to get out of it (laughs) where i said i had a dream and i was literally like it was in school that day and i was like i had a dream i'm like something's not right like it's not the right time or whatever and (laughs) scott i actually talked to your dad about it Uh and uh and I, I remember I just like broke it off and I, it was really awkward. The teachers were mad at me for a while. Um, like people at the church, like whenever they would walk around, like nobody would really talk to me. And, and like people were like mad at me for sure. Uh-huh. And I, it, I it, last, it lasted for a little bit. But then like I started getting close to people in the church again once it was my senior year. And we did like the bake sales or, or we had to like work the church cafe on Sundays <laughs> um, to like I think it was to fund the senior trip. Mm-hmm. If I'm correct. Yeah, probably. Yeah. That's what um, you, would, you would do those fundraisers because yeah. the seniors get to go on the trip. Yeah. Yeah. And then we started <laughs> actually right after I graduated, we were about to start dating again. And I was like, maybe she's out of the like church a little bit. Like I was talking to my mom about it and I realized that she sort of wasn't. And uh, she wanted to like date in secret. And I was just like, nope, not doing this. Mm-hmm. And then I like literally at that same time, like I had sort of I was going to like this uh, gym in junior college and like I had like been talking to just people there and there was like another girl there and I was like, Oh my gosh, this girl's sort of normal. If I actually want to like pursue something, I need to cut off this weird stuff. And like, I saw what it was like. And so I was just like, I can't do this again. Sorry. Mm -hmm. And then I literally just started dating this 
other girl and I was like, wow, this is normal. And I have not dealt with normal for four years because it was like we were on and off. Like it, we'd meet at weird parties and it'd be like little flings. Yeah. And it was, it was just so uncomfortable. And the baggage of the church was just so much to it was so much pressure to deal with. And the people talking to me to go to the church, it was it was a little scary. It was a little scary. I will yeah. admit. That's a, I, I want to hear it like, just, you know, like dissect that a little bit because that is, you know, you're talking about like you ended up like dating somebody who had nothing to do with the school, the church or whatever. And like, it was just easy. And I know that like in high school that, you know, any dating you're going to do can be like lightweight and doesn't have to be all that heavy. But when the church gets their like fingers in there, I mean, did you see I like that's hard for you to deal with. And like you're wanting to pursue something that like you have to like pursue with the whole community, like the whole church, like the shepherds get involved and like the teachers are mad at you because probably they're being told to be mad at you, like saying that you did something who knows. But the um, but like I can imagine for, you know, for this girl that you were trying to date like how hard it is for her too. like what all of this, like work that's put into just trying to like do something very normal for school. I mean, like what was your perspective on seeing that stuff? I, I mean, I think that it was, it was sad and I felt really bad. Like I, I remember how bad I felt breaking it off because what I knew was normal is the complete opposite of what she thought was normal. Like she thought all of this was something that happens all the time. And then I was just like, dude, this is not what happens. Like I shouldn't be like, it's one thing to ha be with somebody and they're like, Hey, like we should go to church. And I'm just like, all right, cool. But it's like, if every time I see a church person, they're like, Hey, are you coming this Saturday or Sunday or whatever it was? Mm -hmm. Are you doing this? Um, like they random extreme involvement. Yeah. And like random teachers that were like in grades teaching, like elementary grades would come up to me and talk about her or the church. And I'm just like, why are you all talking to me about this? Mm -hmm. Like, this is, I, this is so weird. I'm not going to go to the church. It's a little creepy. Like it, that, it, it felt like stocky almost yeah. like, like Scientologists. Yeah. Like, yeah, yeah exactly. you're, getting, you're getting it from like a bunch of different angles. And yeah, I, I have a little bit of experience similar to this where I dated somebody who was not a part of the church and I, and while still being a part of it. And there's, there's this thing, you can see it in the person, this from my perspective, obviously as a church member, you see it in them being incredibly uncomfortable around like the church people when you bring them to church you're on the other end of it so like obviously you're telling me it's uncomfortable can you try and explain like what that discomfort is because i understand it but i don't get it you know what i mean like i don't right. i don't know what the thing is that's like it's it, it felt like so i remember i did go to church with her once because i was like all right i'll give it a chance and it felt like I was an animal in a zoo and everyone else was behind the glass. That's the best way I could put it. Where like everything I was doing, like I would look to my left and there would be like 13, 15 people staring at me. And I'd look to my right and there'd be like another 20 staring at me. And then like I would be outside and then like people would be like almost in a line to talk to me. And I'm like, oh my God. what is happening? Uh -huh. Like this is so like this is too much like I'm already trying to impress her dad who's like uh, he was like an intimidating guy uh -huh. at that point where like I wasn't as tall and big as I am now so I was still like uh it it was it was intimidating so I was like trying to deal with all these normal teenager dating feelings uh -huh. but then it was like I was having to please like a bunch of dads and a bunch of moms rather than like focusing on one and actually enjoying a relationship. Yeah. While also feeling like you're being recruited. <laughs> oh yeah. yeah, for, for sure. Like I, I, I remember after we did, I did some, I don't know if this was, I think it was before we dated. I did some talent show there. It was like some talent show and I did this like beatboxing thing. And, uh, after I did that, like, cause a bunch of the church people went to there, like after I did that, 
so many church people were like, you should come to church and do this. You should do this here. Like you should go to YASP and like teach them this. You should go to Shiloh in the summer and like do something with this. I'm like, I just wanted to have fun. Like, I don't want to do all this. Mm -hmm. Like, I just want to make people laugh. (laughs) Yeah. So you, you also shared with me some like, uh, these stories where like you're brushing by the church and you're interacting with like different people. And there were a few times you said like Marilyn, Oh, we got a kitty cat. Uh, (laughs) There were a few times you said like you're you're running into Marilyn for some reason. What was, can you take me back and explain what that was? Yeah. So, and sorry if I'm talking too much. I've wanted to talk about this for so long. That's when I heard it, when you, I heard you guys are doing this and I saw your stuff on YouTube, I was like, Oh, maybe we can talk about this and he, and like they can, sort of clarify things with me. Uh-huh. So <laughs> <laughs> yes, please ask us questions. Cause yeah. like, yeah, we want to know, like, this is part of like, I think what's interesting about this is like, you're an outside, you're an outsider, but you're also like, you had a foot in. And so we sometimes don't know what we don't know, um, or what other people, the way that people saw us. And so, yeah, right. we definitely want to hear about that. But tell, tell us a little bit about, uh, yeah, Marilyn. Um, So we were on our senior trip and it was in Hawaii and it was with the principal and her husband were the chaperones and we had to go to church one of the days and beautiful church. I was like there and I was like, dang, this is, this is really nice. Like we were playing on the basketball court there because we didn't really want to go into the church. Like, cause I think who was in the church there? I think one or two people only were in the church who was in my class. Oh, okay. Yeah. You mean they um, were a part of the church? Yeah, they were yeah. a part of the church. And my graduating class, I think, was eight. Uh-huh. So, like, or, <laughs> which was pretty normal for that uh, school. Um, so, like, we all were, like, there, the two people went to the church, and we were sort of just like, let's play basketball or whatever. And I was playing basketball in some – random two guys like came up to me and they were just like, Hey, Marilyn would love to meet you. And I was like, I don't know who Marilyn is. And I was like, but okay. Like, and they were like, Oh, uh, the principal is also there. And like, maybe whatever. And I was like, Oh yeah, guys, let's come. And they're like, Oh no, Bo, like you're good. Like you'll be back out in a second. And so I like went into there and it, it sounds so weird, but like it didn't, the rooms that were at that place almost felt cultish to me, <laughs> if that makes sense. Like, it didn't look like how it looked on the outside. It just looked like I watched, like, some documentary and it was like everyone was sitting in these weird chairs. Like, <laughs> I don't know. It was weird. And, like, I got a weird vibe immediately. But she was uh, standing up there and people were sort of sitting almost around her. Uh huh. Um, and it was like her and... I don't know if it was her husband and like a few other guys, but she was the only girl and they like introduced me to her and I was like, hi, nice to meet you. And then she like sort of was like, you too. And she like put her hand on my chest and she was just like looking at me and I was like, and she was like, it's very good to meet you. And I was just like, cool. And I was just like, I'm going to go play basketball. And she's like, I really hope you're enjoying your time here. Um, and I honestly don't even remember that much what she said, because I thought it was so weird that I was singled out like this. And I think it was maybe because I'd been on and off with that person that Uh I was dating because I was the only person who sort of dated someone in the church and other people made fun of me for it (laughs) in the school. Mm -hmm. But, uh, yeah, it was just a very weird experience and sort Mm -hmm. of uncomfortable, but like, I get how if you weren't maybe an outsider or even if you were in it, it was like, it was like they almost set it up that she was the person and like the person acknowledged me. And I was like, well, that was pretty cool. And then I was like, don't think like that. That was not cool. That was weird. I'm like, it's working. The punch is here. (laughs) Yeah. Uh, But it it was just a weird situation. Then I just went back outside. I think I grabbed a donut and uh, started playing basketball again. (laughs) That's so that is I I don't know. I think that's that's strange. It's like you're hanging out at this like beautiful church. There's like not a lot of other people there. Just like a few people playing basketball in your class or whatever. Or was it like a Sunday? Well, the whole church was. Yeah, it was a whole service that was happening. But it was after 
and the service was unusually long. I remember uh, well, I was just like, they're all yeah. unusually long. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It, it was very Marathon long. Services. Uh, yeah, it was, it was really long. And like when we were playing basketball, like there was people that were in the church that I didn't know. Um, and I was talking to them, just like making them laugh. I try to always make people laugh and maybe it gave off the message of like, I want in. <laughs> like, <laughs> Yeah, it's, it's, uh, I don't know. I, I, we could speculate a million times, but like, just like you're saying, like, it's a weird thing that like, she like called you up to the upper room, placed her hand on your chest and, and was like, said something special and everybody treated it like, cause that is special. Like getting audience with the queen is special. Mm -hmm. And that's that's what was happening. Um, I don't know why that is weird. Maybe she just like maybe she heard about you from when you were trying to date that person or maybe she just saw you on the basketball court and had a magical I think feeling. I did get, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I got closer with the like with the principal, not like in a weird way, but like I. I was just sent to the principal office for the dumbest shit. Sorry. Uh -huh. Where it was just like, I would always be there. And it was to the point where like, I would go in there and she would just be like, just tell him I talked to you, go back. And I was like, all right. And we had like sort of almost like a buddy, buddy relationship. Mm -hmm. um, so I thought maybe that could be it too. Cause I know that they were sort of high up mm -hmm. maybe. Yeah. I, I don't know. Yeah. I mean, yeah, maybe. What what are you, what is your take on it there, Charity? You got a little bit of that understanding of getting access and then getting it removed and all that. <laughs> oh, well, I just found that Marilyn always had some kind of motivation for who she, that in my opinion for who she singled out and gave attention to at any given time and it was, you know, something would benefit her in some way. Um and then she would use that to draw someone in. And then like shun them. At least that's what I saw happen and it happened to me. But I don't know. I kind of like this more suspicious side of me is like she had designs on you. <laughs> you know, like oh she's like, oh, look at this tall drink of water. Because <laughs> <laughs> it's peculiar yeah. that she would single you out of all those people. Yeah. Well, it, it was very weird. That's why like when Scott, like I DM'd you, that was the one sort of thing that really... I was like, I've been wanting to ask people about this because it was weird. Yeah. And like nobody ever really acknowledged it after. Like I remember I brought it up at the house that we were staying at with um, like a few people. And it was sort of – it was brushed off like really quick hmm. um, by like the the principal. And, yeah. Dude, it was just so weird. It was weird. <laughs> it was uncomfortable. I remember that the person who brought me there, I had said something like this is sort of weird or it was some sort of – my humor is very sarcastic uh -huh. and um, I said sort of a sarcastic thing and it sort of turned the situation off, I think. Yeah. And the person was mad at me, uh, the chaperone. Oh, uh, okay. Did she you not sort show of enough was, reverence to Marilyn? Is that what was implied? I'm not. Literally, it sounds weird, but it's almost like foggy because I was very uncomfortable. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. I remember almost like a look of disgust in in almost like both of their faces, but really the chaperone. Mm -hmm. um, but so it was like, so you said out loud that it was weird. And then yeah, I was like, well, that was weird. Like I'm like getting a donut sort of. And it was like going back out there it sort of got like a donut i remember so this is right Don't after like, sorry sorry just to back to set the scene yeah, again this was yeah. this is hawaii still you're coming downstairs yes. after meeting Marilyn. you grab a donut you take a bite out of it and you're like that was weird and then go ahead. yeah i didn't even take a bite out of it i was just like so i was like that was weird and like uh -huh. i sort of like looked back waiting for like the laugh or whatever and like she had sort of a stern face oh almost said it again uh, the other person had a mad face uh -huh. and then like the two security guys or whoever the heck they were uh were sort of just like hey come here and like we just sort of like walked back out and it was just an awkward situation when okay. i was just sort of trying to make it maybe i was just really uncomfortable and mm -hmm. i went to my sarcasm and humor but there was definitely like distaste but i also felt in almost like a a higher position because i was like dang like i just don't know who this person is, but everyone was there when she like gave me this weird handshake, hug, hand chest thing. Yeah. 
Because she was used to being, I mean, everybody would just like live and die by Marilyn's attention or words. Like I remember feeling that way. If, if Marilyn was approving of me, I was okay. And if she wasn't, I was the, I was dog shit. And it was like, you never knew what you were going to get. If you got an audience right. with her, it was like going, going in to see the, the queen for mm -hmm. sure. Yeah. I just remember like the sarcasm that I had a lot. I think that got me in trouble a lot. And it was maybe that's why I never got touched on the chest again. But <laughs> uh, and I'm sorry if this doesn't make sense. I feel like I'm talking a lot. It doesn't make sense. It's just like there was so much that happened. And it's like in my head, I'm trying to remember stuff. Yeah. And it, I just remember the hand on the chest, sarcastic comment. But like I just walked was sort of walked out. Mm -hmm. after it was pretty stern well it's just one of those things that like when you're in it it maybe doesn't seem as weird as when you step back and get perspective even though you had that feeling like this is strange um yeah. but now you've had all those years in between and heard the things that you've heard know the things that you know and then you go oh yeah that definitely was odd mm -hmm. but yeah. like those of us who were who were in it for all those years especially like born into it we didn't have any perspective like on what was weird and not weird. Like I've told Scott about one of my um, college roommates. I, I was one of the few people that actually went and lived at college, which was kind of a no-no. So I actually had roommates. But I remember inviting one of them to one of the Shiloh Amphitheater shows. You know, because you think that's like a benign mm. thing. It's not like a <laughs> I'm not inviting them to a church service. They're going to think mm -hmm. it's cool. There's fireworks. There's but a she lot of invited many leaders. times to those. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh. Well, it was really funny years later when I told her like, oh, yeah, well, like, turns out it was it was a cult and blah, blah, blah. And she just started. She's like, I'm oh. so sorry. Sorry, Charity. But I got to tell you, like, my boyfriend and I were driving away from that show and I looked at him and I was like, I think Charity's in a cult. <laughs> and I had no idea that other yeah. people that's, would that's, think that from an amphitheater show. Like, Yeah, I, I do that's remember <laughs> there was one thing that bothered me a little bit that I would love to ask you guys about. Yeah. I remember that there were certain girls in the high school that, and sometimes the guys too, that would be like, oh, I'm sleeping over in this room above the kitchen. They're like, it would be like, oh yeah, we're, we're like with security tonight or something. And I was always like, that is so weird. Oh, uh, that's maybe they were working security. There would be 24 hour security from time to time. And they did rely on like high school aged kids, kids to do that. To like, and that room, that was like the shepherd's room, the fancy it was shepherd the conference room. Right. The conference room. Yeah. yeah. Um, like office space and stuff. Uh, but that I've is, been in there in one of my interviews. <laughs> what interview? Uh, it was another like shepherd thing. But it was like a bunch of shepherds. What was that like about? When it was, it was, I wish I could say her. It was one of the shepherds and I'm guessing a few other ones. Uh -huh. It was the principal's hub and her. Um, and there was just, I can't even put the face to them. But I was up there for another time now that we're talking about this. Yeah. I think it just reminded me from mm -hmm. saying the security thing. Because um, I was above the kitchen or above the where we had to do the Sunday cafe thing yes. right yeah so yeah i've definitely been up there and that was for another meeting about what's her name and it was sort of the same general questions but there was more people what was that it was like second round of interviews before dating or a different time that you were it was a different time okay. i don't think it, i think we were already dating i think it was like maybe we were, we got caught doing something at our house or something yeah. And then, because I remember shortly after that, we had to sit in her living room every time I went over there. I don't, I don't date know. Date in the living room. Date in the living room. It's so chair. weird that I just remembered that. Like, it's so weird that I just remembered that. Well, it's that. really yeah. interesting. Like, it's, they were, it was one of the biggest things they wanted to control were people's relationships. Yeah. And I've been on the other side of it where I was like her trying to date someone outside the church and trying to explain like why I couldn't like go out on a date with them at this time or blah, blah, blah. I was like, well, I have this mentor, you know, trying to explain it in a way that didn't sound culty. Again, like I, I think yeah. about it now and I'm like, if I was trying to phrase it in this particular way, so it didn't sound weird, like it should have dawned on me that it was weird. <laughs> yeah. 
But it almost became like too much work. You just like you're saying where people just would go like, why do I want to deal with all this? It's like you've got all this weird baggage. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. And it's like you just couldn't be like a teenager. Oh, yeah. It was so stressful. Yeah. 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 Yeah, That must have been hard. Like, I mean, especially as a teenager, like it's one thing to like this is like your, you know, basically like an introduction to dating. You're like trying to explore like what this is. And they're all coming in. It's yeah, like, no, oh, she yeah, was my you, first kiss. <laughs> yeah, you date by committee. Like that's that's how yes, you do you it. Date like by you don't exactly. get to. And and one perspective of this is like, oh, it's like a big family. It's kind of like you know, in some like um, like indigenous or like uh, like these like. Uh, I'm trying to think like Polynesian like groups will like you meet the person you want to date and you meet the whole family and that's like mm-hmm. fine and fun, but this isn't. That this is no. being dragged to the upper shepherd's room and interrogated for dating or for kissing too much. And then now you have to sit in the living room anytime you want to see her. And it's like not the parents that are upset about this. It's not like they're not even talking to your mom. They're like pulling a teenager yeah. in and they're just like imposing. It's so it's so uh, it must be just so strange from your you know, not being a part, not being raised in this thing. Um, do you think in any way, I mean, you seem like you got it all figured out, but like, do you think in any way, like <laughs> being raised in like going to this school and, um, do you think it's affected you in any way? Do you think like you missed out on like a normal fucking high school experience? <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. Um, I mean, I talk about this all the time. It's actually a icebreaker for my my wife now. She'll be like, Bo went to a cult. And I'm just like, stop. <laughs> like, I did not go to the thing. But like, it's a joke. Like, and even my best friend, he'll say the same thing. And uh, I, I do say that the the relationships, like my best friends to this day that I met there, I'm like, that's the most positive thing ever. And I do think I missed out on a lot, like sports and all that stuff. Yeah. I probably, I'm, my biggest regret is like, I probably would be like in the NBA or something playing (laughs) basketball because like I was on a high school team and I didn't like have to earn a scholarship to Cal State or something. Uh Like it, like I missed out on sports and I missed out on high school parties. Um, I missed out on a bunch of stuff, but I also think that I became the person I am today because of the positive stuff that was there. Luckily, I think I had a good, maybe like friend group and like my family to sort of help me not get sucked into Mm -hmm. it. But a lot of the things that happened there, like genuine relationships were made. I think healthy boundaries were set um, after being influenced so much, like to a point of just like being so stressed all the time to just go to school. Mm Um, but like I had a year or two left when I got super stressed. I even like went through a thing of depression too, where I was just like, I hate going to this school, but like, I'm not going to deal with leaving my friends and going to a new school for a year. Mm -hmm. Um, what what about it caused you to be, what about it, um, was so difficult? Just like the constant recruiting (laughs) tactics or just... I wouldn't say it was like the recruiting because I feel like that probably like slowed down after I stopped dating her. Um, It was more so just like I felt like I was learning nothing. Like it was just like I like there were some days where some of the teachers were like, all right, who wants to teach today? And I'm like, literally, like, what are you talking about? Mm -hmm. Like and I felt Mm -hmm. bad because my mom and dad were paying so much dang money and All I'm doing is goofing off in school the whole day, not learning one thing, which I thought was cool at that time. But now that I'm like, people will talk about stuff like that they learn in high school. I'm like, dude, I did not learn any of that. Mm -hmm. Like, it was literally just like, I'm pretty sure like Bible class was the longest class where like we actually talked about stuff. We had to watch old videos of like when the school was at the church, Shiloh videos, like it, it was just, it was just sort of a nightmare. <laughs> what kind of videos did they play about sh- like Shiloh? I don't. Uh, the, there was videos of Shiloh. Um, I just remember seeing videos of my friends in like some dorm things. Uh-huh. Like, 
and for sure at that point I knew that it was like a cult and I was like that is a cult compound 100% oh yeah uh, and in Shiloh one you're of my to. yeah yeah and like I saw some videos of like the services and people were like sweating and like apparently there were like <laughs> seven hour services or something but they were showing that like it was so powerful that people wanted to be there, but people were taking naps in between uh -huh. and it would go from videos of that, like showing that in like a firework show, I think we watched. Mm -hmm. And then it would go to like old footage of like people literally like at where that um, the shepherd office is. And like, I guess the school was there before. Yeah. And we'd watch videos about that. And I just be that's like, that's strange. Why would... That's really strange because that's not just Bible class. That's propaganda. Yeah, that is so, not teaching you about the Bible. That's so interesting because yeah, I, very true. I don't remember <laughs> that kind of stuff. But it's like also when you know I was a part of the church. Like it's, it was. I think most of the most of the kids. There was still like I was like at that precipice where it was like still most of the kids were part of the church that were going to the school. But I think when you guys got around, that was like there were a lot of like you said your class only had two kids that were part of the church. Mm -hmm. Um, out of the eight, which is a huge number. Uh, and, but like, that yeah. is, that is, that is sounds like, just like Charity said, that's like propaganda, like properly. That's not, there's like nothing to do yeah. with Bible, <laughs> Bible stuff. It, it's literally like, it, we're talking about this and like, I'm the shepherd's office and all this stuff. It's just like, I'm starting to remember stuff now. Uh -huh. And it's like, you are talking about the propaganda and that's totally what it was. And that's how I ended up going to the, the YASP one time where that was the first like, oops, I'm in a cult moment. Like I was just like <laughs> when I was at YASP and, and I was like, so you went to the like, young, young adult summer program in Shiloh. Not in Shiloh. Island. No, not in not Shiloh. Shiloh. They wanted me oh, to. There was an LA and one? no, my mom was like, absolutely not. You're not going to that. Um, <laughs> the Shiloh one, but my buddy who is my best friend now who wasn't in the church, he went and he came back and he was like, and I was like, what happened? And he was just like, dude, all we did was work. And I'm like, yeah. what do you mean? He goes, all we did was work. And he's like, I think you're right. This place is a cult. And I was like, I told you. <laughs> like, I knew it. That's <laughs> and so funny. It, but yeah, I did go to the Friday YASP things. I think it, I went to two of them when I was dating her or about to date her. Like the, local, I was like the local young adult meetings that were happening in LA. Yeah. yeah. And it was a house with a pool. That was I mean, my, that's pools, my, that right? was probably my parents. They were last, uh, oh, yes, I think it was yes leaders at the time. Yeah. Yeah. And at first it started out normal. And then it got to a point where I was like, what is going on? And like, they started bouncing blessings off the moon and like some people were crying and I was like, <laughs> They were like, send it to mama and papa or whatever. And I'm just like standing there by the pool. And I was like, am I, if they're going to like jump on me and drown if I'm not like, <laughs> it was that, that was the aha moment for me for sure. And I like went to my friends the next day and I was like, we were right. This place is a cult. Uh -huh. Like that was the weirdest experience I've ever had. It started out as worship music and then it just went. <laughs> Like it bouncing, was bouncing. They literally said bouncing prayers off of the moon. I mean, I've heard moon. a lot of weird shit, but like I haven't heard that one yet. No, no. They, they said bouncing. Uh, the blessings was the word. Yeah. They said oh. bless them, and it, they said bounce the blessings off of the moon to mom and pop mm -hmm. or whatever it was in Hawaii. Yeah, Maryland. Mama. Yeah, and I was just like. Just sort of standing there. Yeah. But I think I was like this because I was sort of like a little scared. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I was like, what's happening? <laughs> try, and, try and blend in. So you were yeah. you were part of a – you went you were going to like a normal Christian church at the time, yeah. right? So was mm -hmm. there was there anything that like – did you see this contrast? I mean, obviously you're seeing it with like you're worried about mama and papa and the moon and all that stuff. But like yeah. what was – what was that <laughs> – I mean, maybe they needed the blessings. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> they always seem to, so. Yeah. <laughs> In the form of uh, dollars. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I would say that um, answering your question – uh, it was definitely a big contrast because I was the sound guy at my church hmm. and I ran the sound and the um, video, like everything. And I just remember, I can't remember his name. It wasn't you and your best friend. It was, I think, the one above 
you. Yeah. So this is like Rick's number two, yeah. number two guy. Yes. Uh, I, yeah. And I have his face. Um, but he was basically just like, cause I was interested. I was like, Hey, I do this in here. And I remember seeing him and he was just like, no. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, Oh yeah. Sorry about <laughs> it's a, the, I'm really good at it. <laughs> yeah. No, it, it, the audio booth was the elite class that was rick's ah. special place and like you had to be fully right. bought into really, the cult in order to really, get in there yeah. Yeah. yeah and you would not yeah. have wanted to get involved in the audio booth because you would have been worked like real hard for <laughs> oh yeah, yeah i bet so i'm good they did they did uh one day uh rick did teach me how to wrap cables though the right way my cables and so you, I may have been getting in there. <laughs> yeah, that's, I mean, you remember, you remember, do you wrap your uh, mic cables properly these days? Oh, yeah. yeah. No, I, unfortunately, I remember that every time I do it. So <laughs> everyone's like, Bo, you wrap these so nice, that like technique. And I'm like, yeah. <laughs> wow. That's verified, verified one of the, the truths of coming out of this, that working, uh, working with Rick and the audio is you will wrap those cables so nicely. <laughs> oh, Yeah. I'm curious that you referred earlier to some of the things that you and your friends would like kind of make fun of about the church. Well, I want to know what some of the things that stood out that's like extra weird just that you would call out. Um, we would, the big one was the YAS meetings. And I, I feel like I was sort of sent in as a CIA agent to that by my, <laughs> the guys in my class. Um, and also one of my best friends was in it. Um, and so, I mean, we would, we'd make fun of the teachers all the time, but like unqualified ones where we were like the raffle thing, uh -huh. um, the weird stuff that would be said in the church, like in like the little chapel, sometimes weird stuff would happen where somebody would be talking about something and like the person like would be over there and we'd just be like, do you hear that? You hear that? And then everyone would sort of look at each other and laugh a little bit. Mm -hmm. Like it was very, we, we would... We would make fun of it a lot, I think, because we were uncomfortable and it was our way of coping with it. Yeah. Um, but I would say we made fun of something at least every day. Um, and weird. I was sort of the ringleader for it, yeah. unfortunately. <laughs> and I feel bad and I got in trouble for it, but I, it was whatever. I know that <laughs> you shouldn't feel bad. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> your friend that you're talking about that was part of it, um, I, he was pretty involved, right? Like pretty definitely in the yes. Yeah, he was stuff. very involved. Yeah. Was there, what yeah. was, what was that like? Did you have to like hide some of these jokes from him? Did you, uh, I mean, like, did you ever tell him like, Hey man, you might be in a cult. Like, <laughs> so we, we never, we never mentioned it. And I feel bad, like to this day, not mentioning it because like I would make fun, like we would almost make fun of him, but not make fun of him. We'd make fun of the situation. Yeah. Like the second he would say something like he would walk out and we'd be like, well, he doesn't know that he's brainwashed. And what he just said is absolutely insane. And I remember like I feel so bad about it because he's one he's literally my one of my closest friends to this day. And he got mad at me. Uh, when he sort of all this happened and found out and like he had found out that I'd been saying this stuff and he's like, you should have fucking told me. Uh -huh. And, and I was just like, I'm sorry. Like I, I wasn't really in the position to tell anybody anything. And I don't know if he was joking about it, but he seemed genuinely mad at me for a little bit um, about all of this. Like when all this was happening and that you hadn't said anything about it, thinking it was a cult. Yeah, because I had gotten I had gotten a message from somebody in the church who we know and it was about a it was about a teacher, that's all I'll say. And that there was like some FBI stuff going on. And um This is after Shalom's letters. Is it after? I don't know. Oh, I, I'm asking. To see when the, well, 2018. So this would have been late 2018. Shalom's letters came out. Did you get the message then or was it when you were in high school? No. Yeah, I would have. I had already graduated. So it might have been then. Okay. But it was about a teacher. And um, it was like if I would be willing to talk to somebody. And I was sort of just like, no, mm -hmm. I'm, I'm not. And then that's when my friend, I think everything sort of started imploding at that point. And going crazy and on the Me Too stuff and then probably stuff with Rick or whatever. And I just remember a lot of anger from people that I knew there who weren't in the church anymore. Um, it, it just felt like 
anger and I felt almost guilty. I remember because I was I'm so close with some of these people and I almost made fun of it. But I also don't think I was too young to like help anybody or know to help mm-hmm. anybody. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But like I, I do feel bad about it. For sure. It's one of those things, though, where even if you had said something, I don't know if they would have been able to hear it. Well, it's right. even it could even be worse than that. Like if you had insisted, then you may not be friends anymore. And yeah. right. I don't you know, his his character is one aspect of it. And would he would he let that get in between you? Not sure at those times. That's something he could check with himself, <laughs> but it's yeah. not just up to him. There's shepherds mm-hmm. and there are other people involved that might be like, Bo is a bad influence on you. You need to stop seeing him. And they would just tell mm-hmm. him whether he wanted to or not. So, you know, in, in one aspect, it's like, you know, we we think about that. And Charity, if I can briefly talked about that with like a little bit of stuff, it's like these people that are on the outside that are like, uh, like the people in Kelowna, like Kelowna as a town kind of knew that the the um this town in Iowa where Shiloh is like knew Shiloh was a cult and so you look at it and you're like well why didn't they like do anything or say anything you know but it's like to us that were in it we were so brainwashed that like you you try and say something and we'll just reject it not Mm -hmm. hear it or straight up be told not to talk to you anymore so it is it is like a really I mean that I think is like really interesting but I also understand like his anger you know, in general, just the like, well, shit, like this whole time, this was a lie. And like my friends knew and I had no idea, you know, that's tough. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, That's really tough. I think it's just like, he's more, he's such a good dude. So it's like, I think he's mad at the whole situation and just like the lies. And he's like, I don't believe in anything now. Like F all this, like, this is ridiculous. And Mm -hmm. like, I, I just felt so bad about it and felt bad about, making fun of so many people (laughs) that it's just, well, that's, I I just feel bad about it. That's what we're doing now. That's what we're here for. That's what, (laughs) yeah. You're in good company. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So everyone, no, I'm just kidding. (laughs) Yeah. Oh, that's so, uh, that's so fun. What, what else, is there any other like little story that you, that is popping fresh into your brain? Um, any Rick, any Rick? Yeah. Weirdness? Did Rick visit the school and do a bunch of weird shit? I know he does, but do you remember any of the times that that happened? Yeah. I, I had to help him with yard work sometimes behind the bungalows. And I remember also, I don't remember what we were doing there. I just remember multiple times being at the Rayan house with him and maybe one other friend or something. And it would be like, we're helping with construction or something. And he would tell us about the Rain Street house. And I noticed it was just like all girls living there. And I was like, this is so weird. Mm-hmm. Like the, it, it was just so weird. And like, I, I saw how you would talk to people and like the prettier girls in high school, you could definitely see. I, I think that, I mean, it was a lot of the higher up guys that I got creep vibes from. Um, and I think the girl that I was dating, she was probably like considered one of the prettier ones in school. And like, you could tell because like the upper men were like almost upset with me or like they would talk to her the most. And especially with, yeah, with, with Rick, I mean, there was weird rain house stuff Mm -hmm. for sure. And like, I remember he would sit there when we had PE sometimes when we had to swim there, I think we had like swim class there. Like once the pool was done, it was a huge deal. And it was like, oh, we're having PE there and we're swimming for like two months straight. And I'm like, what? Why are we swimming so much? Mm-hmm. And like, I remember he was there and some other people and they were watching and they were like shooting the fountains off at us. Like, it's yeah. it, the Rick, Rick and, you know, anybody from the church. But, you know, if we use Rick as the example, had full access to the school. And even after leadership knew his you know the fact that like his i always like see this as like his last two wives were both graduates of the school that like he was there for like their commencement speech and all this stuff and it's like he had this series of problems but like no one ever 
questioned if he wanted to go to the school and say and do whatever he wanted, just like at Yasp, the stories we've heard of him, like going into the dorm rooms and stuff. It's just he had full access. Um, and I remember seeing that same kind of stuff that you're talking about, the older men that were leaders in the church or whatever, would just kind of give a lot of attention to the pretty girls in high yeah. school, you know. And it was the the school was an extension of the church that it seems, especially the way that you explain it, too, is like this like front end that they could try and make seem like something else as a recruit recruiting tactic. And then I don't know, just kind of whatever. But it had everybody. All these leaders had access to whatever they want, whenever they wanted. Um and and even just using you as like labor for like working on the freaking rain street and all that, that does stuff. not even seem like an insurance liability like you're <laughs> in, enrolled in school and they're pulling you over to do manual labor yeah. and construction like it's these people didn't have any common sense right yeah. uh, they have no idea yeah. of how the real world operates yeah i mean it was total like thinking about it it was total like child labor and stuff like the stuff that we were doing like, especially like at the rain house when I would have to help with stuff, like there was times where, I mean, I, I think I was like just coaxed into it, but like I I volunteered to like go help like paint something mm -hmm. or do this. And I'm just like, well, shouldn't I be at home playing video games right now? Why am I staying after <laughs> school? Or like, why am I here at five in the morning mm -hmm. before school? Like yeah. <laughs> it's. They would try and, and the get thing about all of it. Sorry. Yeah. They would try and get like kids that weren't a part of the school to like take, take part in the extracurricular volunteer things and make it like, oh, it's fun. It'll be really fun. We're doing all work, work night tonight. Real late. Come and run wire, yeah. paint a wall or whatever. Yeah. Wasn't it like a work day or something? There was oh, a name yeah. for it. Well, like every, like, what was it? Every, always work days all the time. Yes. Yeah. But then there would be like the big pushes for projects like Rain Street or even the bungalows or whatever they were doing somewhere. <laughs> I remember there was a big push for the church and my dad, <laughs> my dad went with me at, for one of them. And we were painting the side of the church and it was like for hours. And like they kept telling us to add more paint, add more paint. And my dad like looked at me. He's like, we're going home. And he's like, come on. <laughs> and like, I remember they're like, oh, no, you're not done. He goes, we're done. Thank you very much. My dad's like, he, he was like a big guy. He's like six nine, three hundred twenty 320 pounds. And so like no one really like questioned him. And he was just like, Bo, let's go. Yeah. <laughs> like, but it was also, like they weren't wanting us to go. Yeah. <laughs> no, but that's a perk of being a non-member is you could get away right. with that without mm -hmm. any repercussions. They always rolled out the red carpet for people they were trying to recruit and like were on their best behavior. And then once you got sucked in, it was yeah. like the dark side emerged. <laughs> yeah. Um, here, yeah. Here, let me share this little video. We may not put it in. Oh gosh. This is oh your graduation. Gosh. We're playing a video of Bo's graduation <laughs> where Gary and Marilyn are putting lays on all the graduates. Bo has yeah. to bend over there because he's is. so tall so that Marilyn can put yeah. the lay over him. And then she grabs him by the face and kisses him on the cheek. Wow, I don't remember that. <laughs> yeah, you don't remember that at all? The kiss. No, I don't remember that cheek kiss. Yeah. They, <laughs> she like touched your neck too. It's kind of I'm telling you, <laughs> it was, it, that just like, like, I'm, it makes sense. Like if, if you're watching that, like, cause I think I tell these things to some people and they don't believe me, but I'm like, just looking at that, I was not lying. <laughs> that yeah. weird thing happened. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And like, I don't even remember that. Yeah. That's crazy. And that's what's, I think there's, um, I think there's so much in this of that, like that weird thing. I think it's a, it's, it's something that I, I want to understand a little bit of that, like that gut feeling you get of like, this is weird that I actually do think maybe we all experienced that everybody that was a part of the church did experience the like weird thing, but we suppressed it because everybody that we knew and loved told us to suppress that. And you're just not, suppressing it because you weren't trained maybe to suppress it as much. I'm sure you were influenced by the school to do that. But like there are those signs, like something is off. This isn't, you know, and even though to you, it just looks like this little thing. Once we all start talking about it, we realize like, oh, this thing is deep. And there's a lot of reasons why this is so freaking weird. 
It's a but, pattern. Yeah, that's it's... like the time I told you, Scott, that Gary Hargrave kissed me on the mouth, and I was like, oh, the fuck? But then I'm like, oh, well, you know, I guess, like, some Europeans <laughs> do that. Uh, it's not totally weird. <laughs> you just try to justify it. It's also, it's also, don't you think it's like, like this school is in North Hills, California. This is, like, the valley, you know, nowhere. And, like, they're all, like, the lays and the Hawaiian kisses and, like, all this stuff. It's, like, they they were the mama and papa thing, like, the mama and papa that you were bouncing blessings off the moon to try and off the moon. That mama and papa <laughs> thing comes from Brazil. Like, the Brazil. Brazilians would say that kind of stuff. And it's, so it's, like, these, like, cultural things that Gary and Marilyn were just, like, no. We like that. We we'll take they're that. ours now, <laughs> yeah. you know. And so, like, we yeah. when we show up, we put lays on the graduates of this random school, and like, you mm. know, so the, it's just I don't know. It's just the, another level of like their narcissism or something of like this Gosh. this whole culture's thing, ours, you know. Mm-hmm. Thank you, the Bo. Sequel. Yeah, this was a uh, no this problem. was really cool. Um, no problem. Yeah. And just uh, Thanks, like like what you guys are doing, I think is really cool. And so. I was, that's why I reached out to you. I was like, I just really want to talk about this. I think it's awesome that you're talking for the victims. You're talking for yourselves and just getting it out and being like, this is crazy. Yeah. So it's cool what you guys are doing. Yeah. And you're doing it in an awesome way too. Cool. Thank Thanks, you. Bo. <laughs> yeah. That was Bo Brown and former, you know, not member of the church, but went to the church school. Um, and, you know, I think, I think it's it's a really interesting to see Bo and his perspective of the whole thing and how he was like proxy to this this cult that has hurt a lot of people and especially when you contrast it his reactions and his feelings to um the girl that he was trying to date in high school and his friend, who was part of it, who he said was angry at at him after his friend discovered that he was a part of a cult. And didn't say anything. And didn't say anything. And Bo's over here in the corner. And of course, he's a high school student. You know, like, I totally understand and like see this stuff. When you're mm-hmm. around weird things and you like see it as a kid, you don't know how to respond to it. No, I mean, And absolutely. he's over like here I- just like, yeah. Go ahead. You, I know you have like opinions about it. I just see like him sitting over there, like making these jokes and like, it's so light hearted. Mm-hmm. Like Bo's experience is like, he gets dragged into the shepherds thing. It's like, Oh, this is weird. I don't like this. Goodbye. You know, he can just dip out even though he's right there. He's showing up for Rick's events. He's doing the work. He's at the school. He's surrounded by these cult people yet. He is not going through the same thing yeah. that that actual church members were going through. Well, and it's interesting too, because it made me think about how even church members who were called derogatorily fringe people. So these were members that were not super involved, not like submitting everything about their lives, but they'd come to like some social events or maybe come to a Sunday service, but they weren't actively participating in the way that was expected of them in order to be in, in the fold. Um, there have been people like that since Shalom's letters that I've heard s- through the grapevine that are saying things like, well, that wasn't my experience, like this abuse. Well, that wasn't my experience. And I'm like, no, because you stayed on the outskirts um, and just enjoyed the benefits of like the social, the socializing and, and whatnot. And with Bo, it's totally different because he wasn't a member of it at all. But it's the same mm-hmm. kind of thing where. If you're on the outside in any way, outside looking in, you get treated well. And especially if they're trying to recruit you. So like all these, first of all, it's really like I noticed in later years when I was on my way out the door that when new people would come in and they would just, you know, like a new person would come to a service and everyone would just be all over them, like love bombing them. And it was a little Stepford wives this too, like just so overly sweet and nice. And I was just like, like kind of like he said, like he felt like he was in a zoo. Yeah. Like he was the animal like, in a zoo. Oh, new yeah. people. And new people never lasted because they for, for sure, like this place is fucking weird. Um, mm-hmm. But yeah, like what you're saying about him having a more lighthearted. So I was actually getting really sad (laughs) during his interview because it's like um, 
the, the fact that his experience was lighthearted and he could joke about it and we joke about it too as a way of coping but um it just kind of made me feel like I wish I had had a normal life like that you know to be an outsider looking in and just like not ever getting sucked into it and the fact that he had parents that were like looking out for him and protecting him from all that weirdness uh it really makes a difference. Like you can even see just, yeah. he seems really like well adjusted and normal. <laughs> Not like us. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's like, it's, it, but it's, it's, it's true because that's the, that's kind of really the difference is the ability to, um, the ability to escape it to where this isn't your own, only life yeah like this isn't the thing that you have that you're like stuck sorry the cat is freaking out it's okay <laughs> you're it's you, you know this isn't this isn't the only thing that like you're you have like there there are lifelines there are other places there's like you know his, like he said his dad was like um let's uh let's go like, mm-hmm. we're not doing this work day anymore because this is dumb. Yeah. And no one can, there's no punishment. Nothing comes out of that. That's like a, that's a problem. And none of this is like, you know, it's, it's just, it's just very interesting. Like hearing, hearing and seeing Bo's experience because I, the, that thing that I keep getting stuck on and I asked him about a few times that I think it's just kind of this elusive answer that I've seen other people who are not a part of the church run into this. Like you said, like new people never lasted because immediately they sensed it. Mm -hmm. They were like, something is off. Something is not right. And that is kind of the same thing that he experienced. Like they're able to like see, like they go to Yas one time and there's a blessing going to mama and papa. (laughs) And he's like, not hanging out here anymore, (laughs) you know, (laughs) like, and it is, it's just because that was not normal. That was obviously weird. And it was just like, it gives you that ick inside. And, um, that was the thing that people that were raised in this didn't get the opportunity to follow through with that ick. They didn't get to decide that they, um, could just bounce and they were conditioned to, not be able to just bounce. Yeah. And so it it is, it is like, it's kind of, I think we're used to getting on these calls and hearing people tell like their heartbreaking stories and the stories that Bo told were interesting, especially seen from his perspective, but like he didn't, he didn't have to, uh, I don't know. Like it, it didn't seem like, like you said, he just seems like really well adjusted, like really great guy, like, genuine and like really nice and all of that. And he didn't have to like, you know, um, fight off. And, and I'm not trying to take away, like, I'm sure that there are things that Bo has to deal with and struggle with just like anybody, but yeah. like some of this stuff, it's like, this I, particular like I said, brand like, of dysfunction, is- this particular <laughs> brand. Yeah. And like his friends and the girl that he tried to date and like, what are they having to deal with? You know? Yeah after their whole community and like so it just shows it shows like a contrast of like somebody with like a healthy family and community who brushed with this cult Mm -hmm. community that is like a not healthy community yeah and it is really nice to hear that perspective because it just validates uh our experience even more Mm mm-hmm And it's like so weird to look back on all of the things that we accepted as normal that are now to us so very clear. They were just bizarre. And, you know, someone like Bo coming from the outside looking in and he immediately saw that it was bizarre. But what chance did we stand like growing up the way that we did? Um, Mm -hmm. We're lucky that we did see it eventually. Yeah. Yeah. We're seeing it now. Yeah. yeah. It, the dating, the whole dating thing too, it was just like the, the level of stress that that put on us as young people, um, just mm-hmm. wanting to date, wanting to find a partner, like whatever. I just yeah. remember being, having so much anxiety about it all the time, especially cause I mostly didn't date guys in the church and just trying to explain that whole, like my whole lifestyle and 
I just must have seemed so fucking weird <laughs> trying to explain why I have to ask permission. I'm in my 20s and I have to ask permission if I can go out on a date with you or whatever the fuck. And it's just like, yeah, dumb. Also, I just like I just like to say that the the teachers and the school, we're we're talking a lot about how they're underqualified and um not credentialed and things like that. And that's, that's true. There was, that was definitely true for a lot of them. Um, all the teachers, especially when I was coming up in the school, like every single teacher was a member of the church and they paid them absolute trash, like lower than public school, um, public schools would pay the teachers. And they did that because it was a part of the calling of the church to, you know, give, everything that you could. And so there were definitely teachers that were credentialed. Um, but there were a lot of them that, that weren't officially teachers like charity. You said, you know, they would call in people like you who had no formal training on this, but you were also just teaching one class. There were teachers that taught full time that were not, um, you know, that were not like officially trained teachers, but that doesn't, that it's it's funny because it like cuts both ways on this whole thing. They really they did not treat the teachers well, I don't think. And I think there were a lot of teachers that were worked like, you know, as all teachers are worked really hard and not paid well. But these, of course, if you were part of the cult, you were worked even harder and paid even less. So there's a lot of room for um for that side of everything to hear their experiences as teachers. Mm -hmm. Well, it's another layer of the exploitation that happened in the church because like you were saying um, on the side that there were some quality teachers there, like a couple that actually were trained and were good, but that was mm -hmm. the, that was a far less percentage of the ones that were just like, well, I don't know. I'm just like here. Cause I kind of know some stuff. So it's not yeah. to say that everybody there was, was not a good qualified teacher. There were a couple. Yeah, definitely. And I did see a few. It is. I, I did see a few of them too, that were like proper teachers that eventually left because they needed higher paying gigs at Los Angeles Unified Public School District. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Paid more there than... It's really sad when a private there. school that's charging all this tuition pays their staff less than a public school. Where, again, where is all that money going? Oh, guess what? Yeah. To Rick's little fun house. <laughs> yes. Yeah, exactly. And that was... And this just... We could, we could go on about the school a lot, but like one of the things Bo kept mentioning was like the bungalows. They like shoved all these kids into bungalows, just like public schools do, but there is always this promise of like, we're building a gymnasium and we're building a whole second wing of the school. No, it was empty. There was a sign up for decades. That's like future site of. <laughs> right. And yet all these <laughs> other projects like right, the rain street resort was Rick's pet project. And so that got completed. That took priority over the school, which that was basically yep. just for events, parties, things like that. Just, you know, just an extra space to have a bar for, for Rick. So gotta have three. Yeah. yeah the, the school was a, just another scam, um, <laughs> going by the, by the church anyways. Uh, and it scammed people left and right students, parents, teachers, all of them. Oh my God, we could do a whole thing on the school. I have so many thoughts. Anyways, <laughs> that was really cool. I I'm glad he came on. I'm glad he reached out and like wanted to talk about like, just, you know, this world that he saw. Um, and I'm sure I can, I can already imagine like so many of the kids that like went through that school who are just like, what a weird fucking I feel place. bad for all of so you like, that went to that school. Yeah. I mean, it was bad enough to like, <laughs> I remember thinking that then like, oh, it's such a fake school. Like, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I didn't go and, to it. Uh, and you know, it, it wasn't, it wasn't accredited. I don't know what accreditation means for a high school, but it wasn't accredited until 2013. So <laughs> I'm going to say that everybody that graduated before that, you might want to look at your diplomas yeah. and see if they actually <laughs> it, might <be> <laughs> it might be fake. It might be fake. Thank you for listening. Please rate, review, and subscribe. Follow us on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or YouTube. Send us your emails at the uh, address in the show notes below. We'd love to hear from you. Take it easy and don't join a cult.